Hello world, this is Kevin from Fiction Factory, and you're listening to DC and DH on the DND Dynamite Hades podcast. All right, guys, welcome into another podcast. This is DC going solo today. DH couldn't be with us. Uh, he'll be joining us next time. We've got one next Tuesday, and he'll be back in the chair with us uh, with with us then. Um, yeah, uh, our guest today. Uh, I, I'm very jealous. Uh, I think she is joining us from the Miami area, where it's probably about 70 degrees there. And hello, I'm in the Nashville area where snow showers behind me are starting to fall. It's about 33 degrees. So uh, she's got the better of the weather, that's for sure. No, we're, we're glad to have Lori Miller with us. Uh, she is a singer and businesswoman. Uh, been in the singing business for a good while. And she's going to talk a little bit about all the experiences that she's done with that. Um, original member of, I believe the name, first name coming out was Exposed. And then it became the, what we knew it as, is uh, Expose. Uh, so she was one of the original members of that group. Lori, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you. It's about to go down to the 30s here, so not so warm. <laughs> I think everybody's uh, old right now. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I follow in that too. Um, let me ask this. I always enjoy starting out with this. What in the world got you started in the music? Fascinated with being in the music business. Well, when I was a kid, I, I I lived in a house where my parents were both really into music. My mom was a singer, director, actress. My dad was wow. a sound tech. And um, they did a lot of community theater, which turned into like equity eligible theater. And I think when I started getting really independent and rebellious, my mom thought a good way to keep her eye on me was put me in her shows. So as soon as I got into one of those shows and I realized I could be a character and be somebody else, I was hooked. And then to her demise, because she never wanted me to be in show business because she was in it herself. Sure. So that, you know, and I grew up with Frank Sinatra and Count Basie and Stevie Needy Gourmet and all that big band, big orchestra, Quincy Jones, Frank Sinatra, all that stuff. So I always loved it. And then I, I begged to play clarinet because I used to just hang out with my mom when she was rehearsing with her groups and just always generated, you just just loved music. So yeah. I just played in the orchestra in high school. I actually didn't even start singing. I was actually a really shy kid. So I didn't start singing wow. until my twenties, but okay. I was always, you know, with my brothers and sisters, a total clown, but in real life, pretty quiet. Yeah. But that, yeah. that's what I loved about uh, being on stage was that I got to be, you know, as big and bad and loud as I wanted. And it was sure. okay. Sure. So it, it was kind of just thrust upon you with the, the family background. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Um, I've never asked this uh, of one of our guests, and I'm curious because it just dawned on me. What kind of feeling do you get when you know the kind of experience that you can provide your listeners, the, the long lasting experience they get from, from what you do? You know, I think it's like that exchange of energy. You mm. know, it was, it was always about that. And I, I actually, studied yoga since a very young age and became a yoga teacher and and then when I was on stage performing as a singer as an actress it was that it was like being able to take people away from reality into another world so they had some freedom for a moment to escape whatever was bothering them so I always really loved that exchange of energy and that sharing of finding another reality to be in, even if it was just for moments, you know, to just be released from. Right, right. Tapping. Um, how did the group kind of originate? Well, uh, Frank Diaz had a small recording studio called Pantera Records in Miami, okay. and he was working with Luis Martinez, who was the producer and the creator of Expose, and they wanted to put a girl group together where all three girls would sing lead. Um, and perform together. And so they started auditioning and a good friend of Frank's, a girl named Daria Melendez, rest in peace, she's no longer with us. She was one of my dance teachers. I was um, studying dance, had a scholarship. And she told me about the audition. And actually at that time it was for another group 
called Technolust that Frank and uh, Lewis did. And so I auditioned for that and was Spice in that. And because of my background in theater, my background with dance and costuming and choreography and staging and all that, they um, thought I'd be the perfect fit for expose, which I actually didn't want to do at first. Wow. I kind of turned it down the first time because I wanted to do my own thing. But then once I met Ali, who was dating Lewis at the time, I had such a, a strong feeling about her, you know, just so protective. She's a little bit younger than me and she was totally petrified and had really no experience other than singing in a church and i just loved her so much that uh well actually there was another girl actually her name was laurie too and she wasn't really quite she wasn't quite right for the group and so they asked me if i would be in it and because i was so close to ali and i loved both of them ali and sandra thought this could be fun you know it could be a fun thing with the promise that i would get to kind of do my own thing down the road mm -hmm. And so that's how it started. It was like so many accidental things because Ali wasn't even supposed to be singer for Exposé or sing Point in No Return, but Sandra was supposed to come in and lay down Point in No Return, but she never showed up. So when Lewis just like pressed the test with Ali's voice, everybody just loved it, rightfully so. I mean, she has such a unique little bell tone soprano sound she she cringes at her original recording because she felt like she didn't have enough experience and she it was a demo you know it was just she was oh, just wow. kind of finding a way right but everybody loved it so much and, and, just, and that original version i think is a 1985 right i think it's 84 actually oh okay 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 so i knew it was right, it's right about nine months for that record to like really get the attention of arista oh my gosh oh my gosh it's fantastic that that version of it um, I was a top 40 band at the time when I was choreographing the group and we were doing it in our in our set list. Yeah. Yeah. Return. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, what was it like to, to to kind of be hit it right then and there in that 80s decade? That's turned out to be so famous. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. yeah. What was it what like? What a great time in history. I mean, we yes. weren't afraid of anything. The economy was great. Everybody was partying. Everybody, you know, it yeah. was just like balls to the walls you know let's just yeah. go for it and the fans were incredible and to have a hit record during that time was just incredible for us too and we we worked so much you know which is yeah. kind of the reason that you know you probably get to that like why am i coming out of the woodwork now after all these years but a lot of people never knew what happened to us That's right. Yeah. We were studio singers. We actually like toured for almost four years and really worked a lot and built this huge fan base, especially like in California and Miami and New York and yep. Chicago. And yep. I mean, we were doing three, four, five shows a weekend. Yeah. You know, for for years. Yeah. And then we got, we got the album deal. We were in California when that happened. And we were ready to go. We had the tour, we had the band, we were gonna open for Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam. We had all these things lined up award shows, Grammy show, everything was happening. And then it just abruptly came to a screeching halt. Yeah. We had actually done all the work. We got the album deal with Arista and had done all, well, I'm jumping ahead. So I'll let you go ahead and ask me some more questions, but. Uh, <laughs> um, it's got to be pretty cool also. During that time period, there was not a lot of female performers in groups that has to be pretty cool are you oh, sure gosh. well that, because shannon was the one who started it right yeah, yeah. And alicia was out there yeah. the cover girls were out there we were kind of like before them because i remember yeah. the cover girls used to come was the mary jane them. about that time too or were they yeah. later mary I jane think, girls i think so i mean when you're living yeah. it you're yeah. not paying too much attention sure. to everybody sure. else you know what i mean you're like yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, well, I guess I guess what I meant by that is this, where uh, several of them that were out there maybe didn't get the recognition that they rightfully deserved. Yeah. Kind of under the under the limelight a little bit. I don't know. I guess freestyle was like in a genre yeah. Yeah. of itself and the hardcore yeah. fans really yeah. knew. Right. I know when we kind of fell apart in that we didn't fall apart, actually, but we'll get to that. But yeah. I know our fans were pretty, you know, they knew right away because nobody, they just tried to brush it under the carpet thing and nobody would notice. And 
uh, Jeanette and Joya and Anne, when they went out, were, had to face a lot of mm. controversy, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of, mm -hmm. they were like, wait, because those girls are really talented and uh, they, but they, you know, the crowd, you know, how would you feel? Yeah. You're used to this certain look and these certain girls, you have like, feel like you have a relationship and all of a sudden it's three new girls are like, wait a minute, what happened? What's right. going on? Right, it's right. It's never been told really, so. Right, right. Um, how about, what is just the lure? I think you've touched on it a little bit, but if you'll go into a little bit more, what, what is just the, uh, the lure of the 80s decade music? I mean, even young people today are still listening to this stuff. They love it. Yeah, there's a huge fan base. Yeah, I, I think there's some there's so much joy in it. And it's mostly, you know, like the dance music, Well, not only mm -hmm. dance music, but all the 80s music. Right. I think it's mm -hmm. just what we talked about that decade was so we were so free. You know, we, it was like before AIDS and before all this other things that happened in the world, you know, mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. was just partying, had money and was just out in the clubs, just not a care in the world just living for the weekend you know right right, right. it's a great memory it's a great time to want to go back and relive that and remember that memory and just feel that you can feel it in the music right very true very true um let me ask this as well um what's some of the things that you're doing you know here uh, currently kind of things that you're doing because i know you own your own business production is that right well, I have a, a company, Sheikah Productions, which I started actually when yeah. I left Expose because I was really known. I did all the choreography okay. and, the sure. and the make. We were very stylized, very synchronized in our choreography. It was super fun. The show was super fun. Um, and so because of that, I started a dance company and I was putting dancers mm. in my clubs. I did that for in Montreal and um, a wow. club in Montreal and then four other clubs here in Florida. I had about 40 dancers working all working together doing this and it wasn't it, we were, were sort of mute uh we weren't singing i was i was singing doing my own thing on the side but as far as the dance company or shika productions that's xica it was putting dancers in nightclubs because it was still mm -hmm. really happening at that time mm -hmm. um, then i uh got an opportunity to go out and work for princess cruises doing my wow. own one woman show and also performing in their big production shows because they had a specialty show called Metamorphosis that was kind of a Cirque type of show. And because I was doing all this sort of bizarre fluorescent makeup that was very illusionary, it was very Cirque du Soleil, they brought me in and I loved it. And I ended up working for Princess for about 14 years, touring and sailing all over the world. I've been all around the world, singing wow. and dancing and performing. It's it just incredible time in my life. Yeah. That I always love being on the water and I love the camaraderie of being with a cast like that. I mean, you're together in this. Uh, it's not like that anymore. I'm so glad I had the opportunity to do it, and especially since COVID, everything has changed so much. I feel so bad for my friends that were out there and had to, and were kind of stuck out at sea. Um, but I got to do, I worked, you know, we did eight to 10 shows a week, plus my own one woman show. And I did that for, for, for many, many years. Uh, 2008, I got off the ships and I actually went on tour with Ricardo Montaner. He brought five girls with him. He's a very famous Latin singer uh, from Venezuela originally, but we were in Argentina and Venezuela. We did about 30 concerts in about 52 days. Wow. And then I also toured locally and doing my one woman show where um, it was 90 minutes of me telling my whole story of how I started and my dad, because he's a sound man, had recorded me when I was a kid on a reel to reel talking and singing. And it was kind of like my thread throughout my show to tell my story and That's talk awesome. about expose and talk about yeah. I would stand on my head in the show and uh, and sing standing on my head. And it was just a really fun journey telling my story. And um, until now, Reese, now I'm I'm in my office now with um, Preferred Jewelers International and Continental Buying Group, a friend of mine that knew my family and actually did theater with me years ago. We uh, both did Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Oh, wow. And that was when I first met Andy and there were so many girls and my mom was directing and my dad was stage manager. So I had a little bit of leeway and I created a dressing room for us. And I always loved her and I wrote her this card 
back then saying, I hope our paths cross again. And I crossed it out and said, I know our paths will cross again. It was a very successful multi-million dollar companies in the jewelry industry. And I'm her creative director now, 40 something years later, giving away my age a little That's bit. Awesome. And she still had that card and she goes, look at that. So I'm here to tell you, your thoughts have power. So if you set your visions and your goals, and now I'm working with her closely, and it's just amazing that I'm with this great team of women, her, her and her husband uh, run the companies, and we put on these big jewelry trade shows, about three mm -hmm. of them a year. And oh. I get to use my whole bag of tricks. I do voiceovers, I'm a concierge, I'm a personal... Um, I do the training for preferred jewelers and I do all the artwork and the voiceovers and the production for our shows. And it's, it's been amazing. Uh, and so I've kind of had stopped recording, but I, I did a couple of um, music things that kind of brought some attention to me again. And so they asked me if I wanted to come back out and I, I really thought about it and I've been really working on writing this memoir of the whole story about what happened with the original girls and the new girls and um and i, I have no i'm not trying to do anything you know or say anything i have nothing bad to say about the new girls except that they never acknowledged that there was an original group mm. i mean they were the original expose and that that's when i was like i don't want anything but the truth right and yeah. you can't yeah. take away i mean that we had everything all perfectly there for you to get on board and take yeah. the ride. So yeah. at least we deserve that recognition. You know, they they re-recorded Point of Return. And in actuality and truth, it makes for a really great story. So yeah. I think me telling the story only helps all of us. And even when I come out and perform and salute the original girls, and I have great video footage of us in a club from that era showing the choreography. That was the one thing that I held on to because we had done the album and I was going to be the only original one left with Joya and Jeanette. And because I found out some things about the end because I was engaged to Frank Diaz, who was our executive producer. And there was just some things that happened that really I uh, was brokenhearted. And without Ali there too, I just felt like I needed to, to leave the mm. group. Mm -hmm. And um, so they were quite upset because they had to go back in and re-record my vocals on my songs, but they left all my ad libs and all my background vocals. And Ali and I are all over that exposure album, but took my credit off. And, mm. but luckily I was written up, we were written up in the Rolling Stone Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And so it's all documented in there uh, that we were part of the uh, that original trio. And rightfully so, rightfully so. Um, so credit where credit's due, right? I mean, that's absolutely. The thing to do especially when absolutely. you have such a hit record like point in no return absolutely you know. absolutely um, I'm a virgin, but i'm partial to ally <laughs> i hear you i understand um let me ask this um during that that time who was somebody that you actually another musician performer uh band whatever uh Allie that, and that, I, that that, that yeah. stuck out to you that you got a chance to work with another well we opened for miami sound machine that was really oh, fun wow. and, so we were, yeah. and then we all had the same vocal coach you know we went to all went to gina moretta she's here in miami and and they were just gloria was just the nicest person and they Seems were so much fun Seems to me. yeah yeah and their band was so fun and we we yeah. performed with them on the side of a cliff in curacao <laughs> i'll never forget it and they all had our wigs on the band and everything and then we worked with them we 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 worked with stacy q i can't remember oh. all the people mostly we were on our own we, we yeah. did it was us featured you know yeah. with it but sure. what band that ali and i were really big fans of this was basha she was with Peter White. I don't know if you remember her because our sound together was a lot like her. Okay. We really loved that. And we were kind of pushing to go in that direction. So it mostly at that time, there were so many groups um, in Miami, like Secret Society and Will to Power. We sang a lot with Will to Power. Mm -hmm. um, I'm on the chorus of stay with me, don't ever go away. You know, gotcha. the bridge of yeah. 
Freeman uh -huh. and Alex and I are on that together. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff with Bob. In fact, I did a record while I was still in expose towards the end. I had a chance to do a record called Love is a Natural Magical Thing. And back in the day, that's when everything was on tape, right? So yeah. Bob Rosenberg sat for like five hours hand splicing the dub version of Love is a Natural Magical Thing together. And I did it with a friend of mine who actually did our costumes. It was on Meet Me in Miami Records. I think it was a one and done. She did one record. But coincidentally, it recently got picked up again and is coming out May 11th of this year. Finally, it's been really dragging because of COVID. It got picked up by a label, a DJ label in Amsterdam and Berlin and uh, Tuscany. So that's coming out in vinyl, uh, 12 inch, again, with a remix by a great DJ friend of theirs from Amsterdam. So I'm really looking forward to that coming out. It's a great tune and hopefully you have it or I'll get it to you so you can. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Um, as we kind of wrap it up. Um, Already? I I, <laughs> I know I, I know I know that I think I read somewhere where you're going to perform in San Antonio soon is that correct in, in El Paso oh El March Paso excuse me El pa yeah I did my let first us know show a little bit about that yeah. yeah well I did my first show here well I got um I did something with Tony from TKA about a Christmas song and I think that you know my friend um Jeff eccentric turned me mm -hmm. on. I said, you should do that. You should do it. Cause he was asking for everybody to do a verse or to do a line or to do. So I recorded the whole thing and sent it to him. And he was like, awesome, man. And he like played it and posted it. And people were like, oh yeah, where's she been? What's going on? And it's kind of brought attention. So Zeke from, uh, I love eighties freestyle uh -huh. music uh -huh. coach said, you want to go out and like, you know, perform like the original versions. Cause there's original versions of Point of No Return and yes. Exposed to Love and Love is Our Destiny that aren't like that on the album. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, man, because I was thinking, you know, it would just be really cool to take everybody back into that era and back to the nightclub and hear the story of what happened yeah. behind the scenes and what yeah. it was like for us as a girl group and how we were treated good and bad, you know, like the yeah. whole story, what really right. happened, because it is a good it's a good story. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of backstabbing and drugs sure. and all that stuff too. But in the end, it was really all about love. You yeah. know, the whole, the whole right. experience. Right. So I'm going to go out again with this cool lineup with Trenier and John Minnis from Nice and Wild and a few other greats and uh, do my little part out there and visit some friends and hope everybody comes out to check it out. That is fantastic. Fantastic. The footage going to be up behind me, so you'll see the original girls and see how we were and very stylized. Yeah, know? and I think I think you can see some of that on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken. If you uh, look yeah. close enough for it, uh, well, I think I've seen website. a little bit of the yeah. It's yeah. all on my website, which is yeah. lardymiller.com. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and tell us how how everybody can keep in touch with you. Okay, if you go to L-A-U-R-I-E-M-I-L-L-E-R.com, I have my whole history is on there, even shows I did on yep. Princess and my one woman show and the yep. new song that's coming out and the vintage footage of the original expose. Okay. Actually, from the club where we found Jeanette, jo uh, Ali and I saw Jeanette because we were rehearsing that day and she was rehearsing with her band, New Breeze, that performed there. And that's where we saw her and saw it. Allie, this girl is perfect to take your place, you know, because Allie wanted to leave first. So there's a lot to the story that people don't know. And we told Lewis about her and they went back and forth for a long time. So it was that coincidentally, I just got that footage from our road manager who was with us at that time. And he wow. still had that VHS and I copied that over as soon as I could to get that footage. Well, he actually did it for us. So it's a little rough, but it, but it's so cool to see yeah. it and to see the choreography and to see the crowd. And it was really fun. Oh, and Sandra, you know, is no longer with us. She um, passed away in December a couple of years ago. So it's really it just feels great to be able to show her and show us together and show what happened, you know, just to know the history of it for all those fans that supported us. And I'm just curious, what made you reach out to me? Where, how did you what was your I interest? I, w I had just read some information about you. Uh, maybe it was your website or I can't remember the first intro about it, but but then when, but but mm -hmm. when you started talking about the original members, that 
struck me to be fascinating. I wanted to know more about that story of, of, the, of the original members. Well, I hope someday you get to really see the whole thing and the whole so many weird things happen, yeah. so many coincidences, and just yeah. it's just really kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and let the let our folks know about uh, your own Twitter as well. I may have read, I may have read something, or I, I know what it was. I, I think you had done an interview with someone, and it was advertised on Twitter, and they yeah, kind of talked. They, they kind of got the. Uh, they had some of the displays of the of the old. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, uh, posters and things like that. I think that's what caught my attention. Oh, it's a small world. You never know who's listening or who's no, watching. Right? No, and we're always interested in, in uh, stuff like yeah, that. It's awesome. I've been doing, thinking about doing this for so long, yeah. about telling this story. And and when I first did that first show in Miramar, which was not too long yeah. ago, it was November 20th, I, I just was astounded afterwards. I was driving home. I was like, wow, you know, like it's, I just here to tell you, just get your visions nice and clear because you can make anything you really have your heart into for the good of all, you can make it happen. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's gotta be, it's gotta be a cool thing to be part of like music history. Cause you are. Totally. Yeah. Especially that, that song. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's gotta be something unbelievable. Well, the first time I actually went and saw Jeanette and Joya and Ann perform, they were here at the Hollywood Park outside. And I was standing far away and I just wanted to check it out and see what it was like. And then when Point of No Return came on, I kind of, it was like one of those movie scenes, you know, where the person like backs up and sees <laughs> the whole picture. I was like, oh yeah. my God, you know, like that was, that What's was our song. Yeah. What's up? You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. the way people reacted and yeah. everything. Can you imagine like in the heat of it, we walk in a club and they would put point in a return on and people would lose their minds. And it was just like, I mean, that's Lewis. He, he created that. He's mm. brilliant. You should interview him. He's got a lot to say too. <laughs> we will do that. We will look into doing that. Um, Lori, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Good luck thank with everything you. in the future. We'll check back in with you. And okay. well, we will definitely pass on any information on the Twitter and stuff that uh, uh, that we we have for you too. So thanks Very for cool. joining us. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank All you. right, guys. That's another show that we're going to wrap up. Hope you have a great weekend. Uh, kids, make sure you get your homework done. Uh, I'll be checking that stuff on Monday. All right. So uh, this is DC uh, from Nashville. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye, guys.